Now I'll explain the same thing with the help of a medical analogy. Okay. So let's say I walk up to a doctor and the first thing doctor is going to ask me that Simran Preet, what, what happened? So I define what I'm, what I'm facing. I would say that, you know, I'm not well, I'm having headache. The doctor asked me the questions. Uh, since when you're facing this problem, what are the things that you are doing? What have you eaten? Where have you gone, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And then um, in, in the measure phase, uh, doctor is going to use certain equipments to measure, probably use a thermometer, probably use a BP machine, probably use a stethoscope to see that what problem that I'm facing. Okay. Once he's contended, then he asks me to do certain tests that either go for a viral test, either go for uh, this test, et cetera, et cetera, so that he gets to the root cause. Similarly, in the analyze phase, we go for some statistical. Once those test reports are, are done, then in the improve, he gives, gives certain medications that take this medication, take this med medicine, go for this medicine. Okay. Once I am perfectly all right, he says, hey, now you need to take certain rest. Now you, you cannot go to office straight away. You take rest for one week. Okay. And that is the control phase. So this is something define, defining the problem, measuring the problem, analyzing the problem, improving the outcome and controlling the problem or controlling the outcome is what we do in six. And that's why I was able to make you understand with the help of uh, a medical analogy. Okay. Uh, I just, I just see Rahul has asked a question on 4D. Is 4D still in place? Design, diagnose, design. Uh, design and deploy. Design is repeated here, Rahul. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, are you which which methodology are you going to talk about? Is it something which which is being used right. in your organ? Right, uh, right, Simon. So what I when I did the project, I used the four Ds, which was define, define, yeah, yeah, uh, define, yeah. diagnose, design, and deploy, and not the D map. Okay, okay. So uh, just to answer to your question, Rahul. Uh, and everybody can refer to the chat because there are questions coming up and you can also, you can also contribute and see that what, where I'm referring from. Abhi, I just talked about DMAC methodology. Rahul pooch rahe ki ek aur methodology hoti hai, isko bolte hai 4D, jo hota hai define, diagnose, design and deploy. So there are, there are plenty of methodologies available in the market and every organization uses it up to their their, conven their convenience and their ease. There is no harm in using any of the met methodologies uh, if you're working on a certain uh, platform, but to go for the Six Sigma certifications, which is, which is governed by all the organizations, e either it's an ASQ, either it's ISI, either it's Henry Harbin, either it is TQMI, everybody focuses on the DMAC methodology. However, okay. you want to go for a Six Sigma certification, uh, there is a prerequisite that we use these methodologies, but for an internal opportunity, for an internal improvement opportunity, uh, you can use any of the methodologies which you want to go for, uh, whether it's design, diagnose, design and deploy, so anything which you go for. But when it comes to certification, uh, DMAC is a must. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so that is, that is what I try to explain you Six Sigma with the help of medical analogy. Now there are three or four ways, uh, how we define Six Sigma. Six, six. As we keep on talking about, most of you talked about in the uh, expectation setting uh, session also that uh, I want to learn the problem solving methodology. So yes, it's a problem solving methodology. So there's an equation, which I'm sure most of you are aware since you're GB trained, but just for the benefit of everybody, there's an equation where we focus is on, which says Y is equal to F X. Okay. Which, which means Y is equal to function of X. I'll explain these variables uh, in a very simple language to all of you that what is the relevance of this? When I talk about problem solving methodology or when I talk about six, let's understand first, what is Y? Y as an alphabet comes from that what is a problem that we are facing. So why is basically an opportunity? Why is basically a problem on which we are working upon? Okay. 
so that's an opportunity x is a factor or a cause which is impacting my y and f is a function of x so there could be multiple x's also so for example if you're trying to improve uh, the productivity so let's say you are trying to improve the productivity as a problem so in your organization uh, there be there's a target been given that the productivity of employees uh, very very low which is uh, currently at 50% so which says uh, you you've done some data crunching and you found that there are only 50% uh, productivity that i have and now you're doing a project so that is why productivity is why and when you're doing a project you identify certain causes and which you identified certain factors and those those are called x's okay so one is y is a problem and x are the causes so now a question to all of you is y an independent or is x an independent so either y or x one is independent another is dependent what do you think which is independent and x. which is dependent so y is dependent on x. x yeah x is independent yeah. y is dependent on x independent right y is dependent on x so y is dependent on x absolutely because i if i work on any of the axes let's say one of the axes uh one of the axes employee reaching late second axis right. uh process knowledge okay so if i work on these axes it will impact my y so y is a dependent variable and axes are my independent variable because if i work on right. these axes uh in silos it would not have impact on each other it may or may not have impact on each other so that's what we have to understand so if i want to focus on if i want to focus on my y i have to identify those causes so that's why six sigma is called as a problem solving methodology where we focusing on identifying those causes and working on them to improve the situation that i'm currently in so that's a, that that's why it is called a problem solving methodology so we will talk about in detail to how to identify those causes how to do that etc etc but uh, this is just an equation that just for the understanding purpose okay okay so sima uh, just to uh, understand it right get clarity so six sigma um, what it exactly means is probably what i just understood is if we identify an opportunity or a scenario and then work on the factors which are impacting it and if we improve on those factors that can help improve the why for us is that correct absolutely bang on bang on okay so okay. yeah yeah so uh, uh, apart from that there are many things that we do but from an understanding perspective very good question art asked at a very good point in time and just imagine when you when whenever you resolve any problem be it your personal problem be it your daily household problem or any any official problem unless unless we don't know the cause uh we we will not be able to resolve so so it is very very important to identify those factors which is impacting my problem so that's what we talk about okay so that is the first thing uh, which is known as six sigma as a problem solving methodology let's move to the next piece so uh, this is something which we already talked about y is an output and x is a input so this is something which we already talked about another definition of six sigma is six sigma as a metric i want to ask a question from all of you so just imagine uh, you are the department head or maybe you are a ceo of the organization or maybe you are the cfo or co of your organization okay there are different different processes or different different functions that you look after because if you are a ceo of the organization which means all the departments under you there is one department head which is reporting into you so you have you're taking care of finance you're taking care of the marketing department you're taking care of the operations department the hr and everybody all the heads are reporting to you and if i ask you a question if simon please ask you a question then out of all these functions that you have which which function is performing the best how would you answer that and what would you say so the function which has less complaints may be one of the factor may be one of the parameter to be considered yes, right sorry. i would say sorry. that we we do have some dashboard right wherein we have some key performance indicators to review yeah some and basis that uh, we would be able to identify which sector or which department of mine is performing as per the benchmark or the agreed 
at the benchmark i would say and then we can come uh, to a conclusion which is performing better than the other yeah here you know from for my organization the kpis are different for different functions so having yeah. common kpis are a little rare to see what i see here is if they are a set of standards uh, i would say uh, one must be uh, out of the closed cases or open cases the numbers are more prevailing which shows the particular function is doing good uh, just an example there are the more but one uh, yeah what about others i i'm really liking this discussion seriously okay nice. what about others so, uh, so, no what i feel just as rat if i'm right it was ratna right yeah so just as she mentioned that we have different kpis so maybe uh, we can just an analyze the performance for a particular department right it would not be that what would be possible to have common kpis for different uh, departments so it's just that if some we have a benchmark for a particular department and we see that they are able to meet that 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 means they are doing good and similarly if the others are all if there is some which are not able to meet it so maybe this is how we'll be comparing it 